All right, we're going to look at a basic uh, power factor correction. And, uh, well, here's an example question of it. So we've got a 347 volt, 600 volt, three phase, four wire supply. It has a 400 amp load that operates at a 0.75 power factor. And the question is, is desired to connect a capacitor bank to correct the overall circuit power factor to unity. So unity uh, basically means that we have no VARs at all coming from the circuit. So it's just true power or in phase current. So right here, all right, by the use of a capacitor bank. Um, so the question is, what would the K VAR rating of the bank need to be to correct this to unity? And then question two and three is we need to calculate the capacitance if they are connected in Y, the three capacitors, or if they're connected in delta, what the capacitance would need to be to do that. So, um, and then the last question, we're going to look at determine the total current of the capacitor bank. So let's begin here. We're going to take the lighting panel here, or lighting and motor panel, and we're going to calculate the uh, VA of that panel right there. So I've gone ahead and made some triangles here. So I've got a lagging triangle for our lighting loads and motor loads here. So S, I want to use, say, lighting equals V line times I line times root three. So we can determine the VA of that. And that's going to come to approximately 415,692. And we're at a 0.75 power factor. So I know that if I multiply my parent power, three phase apparent power of that panel, I'm going to get a true power of that uh, load there. And it's going to come to about 311,769. So, so from there, I could use Pythagorean theorem or I could convert the power factor to angle and then use sine theta multiplied by our apparent power. Um, either way that you do it, you can get uh, lagging VARs of that panel is going to be around 274,954 VAR. Okay, so because this one is correcting to unity, all that really means is the only thing that's going to be left coming from the circuit is going to be the power, the true power of our loads. So um, the S total final S total, that's going to be exactly the same as the P total. And in this case, we just have just these loads here. So that would be 311,769 VA or Watts, because it's exactly the same value. Um, and what must be equal is that these lagging VARs here that the load requires, they have to be supplied by our three phase capacitor bank. So QXC total in this case is the exact same as the Q of the lighting panel. So the required VARs are 274,954 VAR. So basic power triangles here. Okay, um, so we've got the answer there for what would the what would be the KVAR rating of the capacitor banks? So I'll just move it over. We're about 275 KVAR, roughly, if I wanted to round it. Now we can move on to question two and three. So, what would the capacitance value be in each phase if the bank was connected in Y, and what would the capacitance value be in each phase if the bank was connected in delta? So. I'm just going to go back a little bit here and I'm going to use some space here just to remember um, back some single phase power formula. So if I looked uh, even our PIRE wheel, if you guys recall that. So basic power formula, power equals volts times current. Okay. And from this, we derived some other power formulas and all it was was substitution is what it was. So voltage times whatever current is equal to, which is voltage divided by resistance. And we got the formula V squared over R. Well, we can use that because we are going to be um, deriving that 
and we're going to be working it out by the phase. So this is a single phase formula, so we're going to get these var this QXE total into the value per phase. We're going to use this formula uh, to figure out our XE per phase. So just looking at this formula, if I were to use it with the QXC, so the, the, the amount of Vars per phase, let's put it per phase, so the QXC per phase, that would be equal to the phase voltage squared divided by the XC in the phase. So we're going to uh, transpose this and we're just going to get QXC is equal to voltage of the phase squared divided by our Vars per phase because we can figure out what that is going to be. All right. So just a little background here, what we're going to be doing. It shows you this formula in the book. It is very handy, so we'll use that. So the first thing here is going to be take our QXC total, and we are going to term, determine how many VARs per phase. Well, the QXC total is the same as saying QC of the phase times 3. So just moving that around, I could go, well, QC per phase is going to be equal to the QXC total divided by 3. So in our case here, we're going to take our uh, 274,000 here, uh, 954 VAR, 274,954 VAR, and we're going to divide that by 3, and that's going to come to about, uh, what are we at, 91,651 VAR. 651 VAR. Okay, so we are ready now to go ahead and use this equation and our VARs per phase to figure out what it would be in Y and in delta. So let's go in Y. We're going to go the XC is going to be equal to our phase voltage squared divided by our VARs per phase from our capacitor bank. So QC of the phase. So in this case, our phase voltage when we are in Y is going to be root 3 less than 600. I just put on here 347. To get more accurate results, I'm going to use 346.4 volts so that we can see a little comparison at the end. So 346.4 volts is our phase voltage. We're going to square that value. We're going to go ahead and divide that by our 91,651 VAR. And so that's going to come to about 1.309 ohms. Now if I want to convert that to capacitance, I'm just going to sub it in my uh, capacitive reactance formula. So capacitance, if I were to use this opposite, would be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi F X C. So just remember, this is going to give you a value in farads. Whatever that value is, you're going to have to multiply it by uh, 1 times 10 to the 6 in order to convert it to microfarads. So when we sub our value of 1.309 into our capacitance formula, you're going to get about uh, 2,025 microfarads. So 2,025 microfarads. Now, if I were to do this in delta and figure out what size each capacitor would have to be, I'm going to do the exact same step. The only difference is my phase voltage is now going to be different. So the XC in delta would be our V phase, same formula, squared, divided by our QXC in the phase. And so now our phase voltage is the same as line voltage, 600 volt squared divided by our 91,651 VAR. Solving that into the calculator, looks like we've got about 3.928 ohms of capacitive reactance. And if I determine the capacitance, 1 over 2 pi F X C, it's going to come to about 675 microfarads. So much smaller capacitor if we were to do it in delta. So if you remember back when we were first learning uh, uh, reconnecting from loads from Y to delta, we saw that they would produce three times more line current, right, if we were to reconnect something from Y to delta. 
or with power would produce three times more power, right? And so that's exactly what's happening here. So in order to get the same VARs, whether it's Y or Delta, uh, we require the same total VARs or the same VARs per phase. What we'd have to do is uh, we'd see that we'd have to have a much smaller capacitor uh, if we we're in Delta rather than Y to do the same job. So as a matter of fact, it's a uh, three times smaller. Notice the opposition in delta is three times larger. And if we compare the capacitance itself, um, it is a third the size of what it would have to be in Y. So just a, a little reminder on that. And I'm sure this question will come up somewhere when you guys are doing your ILM uh, work. So three times difference here. So three times smaller or divided by three. Uh, last question here. Number four. What would be the current um, after we corrected this? Okay, so, well, that's this S total here. So we just got to figure out the line current based off of uh, our total VA of the circuit. So if I were to put an amp meter right here, we're determining what it would be. So S total is equal to V line times I line times root 3. And if I solve for I line, I have to take my S total, divide it by bracket V line times root 3 and bracket. So if I go ahead and put those numbers in, 311769 VA and I divide it by bracket 600 volt times root 3, we're going to get approximately 300 amps. So not bad. By co correcting this circuit uh, to unity, we have dropped the current down basically 100 amps from where we started. So that's pretty good. That's a lot of current. All right, hopefully this helps out. We're going to see you on the next one.